Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic, where you submit your questions using the hashtag AskGCNTech. We pick them out, try and offer the best advice we can. So let's go straight to our first question. So this week we've got Steve Tranovic, who says, Hi Ollie and Alex, I've been watching the Tokyo Olympics and the men's track sprinters are wearing loose fitting clothing, like large pinned on numbers and all kinds of bling, so gold chains and necklaces. As cyclists, we're obsessed with weight and aero clothing, so wouldn't these sprinters benefit from aero skin suits and losing the bling or are the speeds and distances not sufficient to make enough difference? Yeah, it does surprise me as well. I'm I'm always a little bit baffled as to why they're not wearing skin suits and tight fitting clothing, basically, like you're suggesting. Now I know in the 100 meter sprint, for example, the time of the event is obviously very short, but the races are so closely contested that surely even the smallest advantage is one worth having. Now in the past, I have seen some sprinters using things like a skin suit, and I've even seen one where they've got a like fully integrated like aerodynamic hood all over the top of their head, presumably to make them more aero, but it isn't really something that's taken off. And actually, it surprises me that Ollie doesn't have a skin suit with a hood on it, just for maximum aero gains. But anyway, yeah, basically I'm with you, so I'm surprised that they don't use skin suits, unless it's down to some kind of ruling, presumably, from the running equivalent of the UCI. There you go. Anyway, next question is from Oscar Craig, who says, what is the difference between S-Bend aero bars and J-Bend aero bars? I'm looking at getting some clip-on ones for my bike, but I don't know what the differences are. Well, it quite simply refers to the shape of the aero bar. So an S-bend, for example, have a flat section, then they curve up and then flat again. So in a similar sense to the shape of the letter S. And then the J-bend, well, yeah, it's a similar shape to the letter J. So it goes, curves along flat and then kicks up, similar to how the letter does. J-bend do tend to be the more popular types because they tend to allow most riders to get the most aerodynamic position and they're available in a number of different angles, changing the way that the J part kicks up on the handlebars. So there you go. Right, next question in is from James Lilly who says, Hi GCN, would I be able to install a BB71 bottom bracket with a bearing press designed for BB30, BB90 and BB86? Thanks James. Yeah, it should be fine. The only issue you might run into is if the tool is specifically designed for a BB30 bottom bracket, that it might not fit into the BB71 bottom bracket that you're trying to install because obviously BB30 has a large axle size. But basically, if the tool fits through the bottom bracket, it'll press it into the frame just the same as it would for any bottom bracket. So no stress at all. Next question is from Jeremy Schramm, who says he's still worried about Ollie he just seems off. I hope you're okay, man. Yeah, don't worry about it. Ollie's fine. If anything, we often find he's too happy and too cheerful. So um, yeah, don't worry about him. He just likes to put on a slightly grumpy sort of act every now and again. Anyway, next question is from Jim Swift, who says, Hi, Alex and Ollie. Recently, I damaged my 2016 Shimano Sora brake calipers and I've replaced them with new Ultegra R8000 calipers expecting them to be fully compatible. I've still got Sora shifters, but the new setup just doesn't seem as good as before. The brakes need a much firmer pull and feel less sharp. Do I need to change the shifters too? No, I don't think you do need to change the shifters. They should be compatible with no stress whatsoever. The only thing that occurs to me is that where they're brand new, the pads might not have quite bedded in. So give them a few more rides, a few more days, and then you might find that the pads have a little bit more bite and feel to them. And the next thing you should check is that the pads are aligned correctly with the rim. So you need to make sure that the pad is contacting the correct part of the braking surface and that all of the brake pad is touching it. So make sure they're pretty much parallel with the braking surface. And hopefully that should increase the performance of your brakes. But if in doubt, it's always worth double checking on the Shimano website, for example, they've got some fantastic compatibility charts and that'll tell you all of the different caliper types that are compatible with all of the different levers and it should mean that you've got no stress worrying on what components work with each other. Next up is a question from Tommy S who says, I find it weird how you guys pretend to look at each other when you're actually in separate rooms. Um, 
that me and Ollie are always in the same room. Oh, I love the fact that people think we're in different rooms and we're certainly not good enough actors to pretend like we're talking to each other. But um, yeah, it just makes me laugh when people think that. Basically, if we're filming together, we're in the same room. Next question is from Eldemar Bartolo. He says, hello from Sydney, Australia. I'd like to get some advice on where is the maximum saddle rail clamp measured from? Is it the center of the clamps and then the clamps can't pass that maximum line? Or is it that the maximum line cannot go past the center of the clamp? Um, okay, I see what you mean here. Basically, the markers on the saddle rail dictate that the saddle clamp, any part of it, cannot go outside of that area. So there's no good lining up the maximum clamping area with the center of the clamp because that will be wrong. So make sure that the clamp doesn't go anywhere outside of that marked area and you'll be perfectly fine. Next question from CNE, very short username. Is it safe to consume energy gels that are past their best before date? Yeah, of course it is. Basically, people quite often get confused with this on everyday food as well as energy products. So best before means the product is simply at its best before that date. It's perfectly fine to eat afterwards. Obviously, you need to apply a little bit of common sense here. It's no good having an energy gel that is like two years past its best before date. The one you need to watch out for, especially on energy products, is the use by date. This simply means that that product needs to be used before that date, otherwise it's considered not particularly safe to do so and, um, well, you could end up getting ill. So, best before date, don't worry about it too much, just apply a little bit of common sense. Next up is, oh, this is a good comment, I spotted this earlier, I had to put it in here. It's from Henrik Stoltz who says, where can I buy a cap like Ollie's with the peak at the back? All of my caps have the peak at the front. It just made me laugh and there's some amazing replies down here. Someone says you can only get them for a special price when you get dropped over and over again. Someone else has said you could just buy a sun hat with a brim all the way around the edge and then just cut off the front and the sides. Obviously the most logical way of achieving a cap with a backwards peak. And then someone else says well I've been dropped enough that I deserve to have at least a dozen backwards caps in their collection. There you go. Um, the easiest way, just turn it around. You know how it works. Next up is a question from Adrian. He says, I need to install noise cancelling foam because the internal routine is making a lot of noise on his frame. Can I unscrew the hose, fit the foam, and screw, the screw it back onto the caliper without replacing the olive? Is there any difference between Shimano and Lifeline or any other? Um, first up, yeah, it is incredibly annoying when the brake hoses are rattling against the inside of the frame. But whatever you do, don't unscrew the hose from the caliper. The best practice to do, undo the hose from the back of the brake lever. Then you can slide the foam over, over the hose all the way down into the frame. And the easiest way of doing that is a little bit of spray lube on the inside of the foam. It will slide down the hose into place and then you can bolt it all back together. You shouldn't need to replace the olives or any of the components. And if you're careful, and you don't lose any fluid and make sure you don't pull the brake lever when it's all apart. You shouldn't even need to bleed the brakes and it'll all go back together with no stress and no mess whatsoever. However, if you are unfortunate and you pull the brake lever or you lose lots of fluid, chances are you might have to bleed the brakes. But nine times out of 10, you should be fine. If you're unlucky, you might have to do a trip to your bike shop and get the brakes, brakes bled. Right, on to our last question. It is from Jennifer Cash who says, upgrading my Ribble Sportive with limited budget and my best to start with upgrading the wheel set to currently that Shimano RS11 with 8,000 miles or the group set and drivetrain currently using 105 group set of the people. Um, upgrading your bike. So in my opinion, the best place to start upgrading and the most cost effective upgrades has to be start with your tires first, so tires, get some fancy inner tubes, they're gonna make your bike feel a lot nicer. Then move on to the wheels. So you've already suggested whether you upgrade the wheels. So that would be my advice. Stick to wheels and tires first. And in terms of upgrading your group set, my best sort of advice and thought on this is only to upgrade it when the components get worn out. I really wouldn't take good 105 group set off your bike and replace it just for the sake of it, unless you are really set on the idea. But basically, I mean, 105 group set is really good. Group set of the people, it will last you well and it will serve you perfectly for what you need on your bike. And the wheels will make quite a big difference. 
That is it for this week's GCN Tech Clinic. I would say we've run out of time, but we haven't because time is endless. So I hope you found it helpful. And if you have, why not let us know in the comments section down below if we've answered your question and it's helped you out. And if you've got any other questions you want to know, please let us know in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. See you next week.